So you want to know if the Gleason 6 is a real cancer or not. Well, in this video, you'll learn all about the Gleason 6 disease and what is true and what is not. Welcome to Health Drum. I'm Dr. Bert Vorstman, a urological surgeon and former researcher. And this digital healthcare channel is all about routine medical conditions and fact-based healthcare so you can be informed and in control of your healthcare decision making. If this is your first time on the channel and you want to learn all about fact-based healthcare, tap the subscribe button below. We get contacted by physicians, employers, and patients regularly looking for ways to make healthcare more affordable and efficient. By the way, Health Drum is for educational and informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. You can read the full disclaimer in the description below. Okay, so let's get into it and we'll check the first screenshot. So here's a list of some of the claims made by those wanting to keep the cancer label for the Gleason 6 disease. With respect to microscopic appearances, molecular alterations, and perineural invasion, these changes can exist, but they are immaterial in the face of biological pathways. As well, there's no evidence that the grade 3 cell can upgrade to a grade 4 cell. And because prostate cancer is often multifocal, it's little wonder that the embarrassingly unscientific 0.1% blind and random sampling of the prostate with the needle biopsy can lead to a semblance of progression or cancer upgrading on a subsequent biopsy. And the claim about missing an opportunity for cure is outrageous as there's no irrefutable and reproducible evidence that any treatment is curative. So we've just looked at some of the claims made by those trying to keep the cancer label for the Gleason 6 disease. But let's dig a little deeper and see what actually makes a cell cancerous or not. So the most important features that determine whether a cell behaves as cancerous or not are its biological pathways, not microscopic appearances, molecular alterations, perineural involvement, or other smoke screens. Therefore, because the grade 3 cell lacks the biological pathways for cancer development and for cancer spread, the Gleason 6 is not a cancer. The Gleason 6 itself doesn't require detection, monitoring, or treatment. Also, screening for and monitoring of prostate cancers is best done with a non-contrast MRI. Unlike the grossly unscientific needle biopsy sampling about 0.1% of the prostate, the MRI evaluates the total prostate and can detect high-grade cancers if they exist. So, if your diagnosis was made on the basis of a needle biopsy sampling 0.1% of your prostate or thereabouts, because cancer is often multifocal, you may benefit from some MRI monitoring, but only by an expert in MRIs. So with this knowledge that the Gleason 6 is not a cancer, what have physicians done to protect unwitting patients? Remember, healthcare is financially driven and plagued with exaggerations and misrepresentations as well as financial conflicts of interest. So let's look at the next screenshot to see what they've done. So here's a list of some of the claims made by self-interest groups as to why the cancer label should remain with the Gleason 6. They're concerned that patients may quit screening programs, that patients will quit active surveillance programs, doctors may be exposed to lawsuits, that prostate cancer support groups would lose funding, and that the medical industrial complex could lose shareholders. These many hollow excuses only lay bare the many financial conflicts of interest in the business of prostate cancer. The bottom line is that the Gleason 3 plus 3 equals 6 fails to behave as cancerous as its biological pathways for cancer development and spread are inactive. And because physicians are unwilling to drop the cancer label from the Gleason 6 disease, 
there are several consequences. So as a consequence of physicians' unwillingness to drop the fake cancer label from the grade three or Gleason six disease, prostate cancer statistics remain inflated, treatment studies that include the bogus Gleason six will be skewed, the cancer label will continue to scare patients into being monitored and others to have unnecessary treatment. Of course, these patients will be survivors of the treatment and not the fake cancer. And keeping the fake cancer label permits the insurance industry to terminate the life policies of those victims with this bogus cancer label. So let's recap. So in this video about the Gleason 6 disease, you learned that the grade three cell lacks the biological pathways for cancer development and spread, that the Gleason 6 is a pseudo cancer, that the Gleason 6 doesn't need detection, monitoring, or treatment, that MRIs are the best screening tool, and that healthcare, because it's financially driven, is plagued with exaggerations and misrepresentations. The continued promotion of this Gleason 6 disease as a cancer underscores the abject failure of physicians and the American healthcare regulatory agencies for protecting unwitting consumers. To learn more about routine medical conditions, self-care, and cash pay healthcare options, check out some of my other videos.